searching is always going to be about how it is that we construct and understand relevance in the query or the responses that you get to your query. When we do a social search, we're constructing relevance in a very specific way. So we're going to be using different kinds of social relationships as cues to relevance. And that can happen in lots of different ways. Um, this actually, interestingly enough, um, in the very first quiz that we had, um, there was a question about like, why don't you always want to use Google for a search or why might, not, why, why might Google not be the best reason or the, be, you know, the best opportunity? Um, and one of the options was that like Google actually is always in this kind of constant arms race with search engine optimizers. And this discussion that we're having right here is actually going to be really relevant to understanding why it is that this actually is pretty problematic for Google in some, in some ways. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that in a moment, but I want to, I want to go ahead and flag that right here. Um, so let's think about a couple of different questions that you might have. Um, so one question might be, I need a pair of jeans. Where should I buy a pair of jeans? Another question might be, who should I believe about minimum wage laws? And then another question might be like, okay, well, what do people think about the latest episode of Game of Thrones? These are all different kinds of social searches. And what's really interesting here is that social media had really nailed this idea that we trust and are more invested in the opinions of people from like different kinds of social circles that like we're social creatures and so we're sensitive to social information and that can help us filter information in certain kinds of ways. So marketers have always known that word of mouth or like personal recommendations from people that you trust are this gold standard in getting people to buy <laughs> to like buy your things. And that's why when you're like scrolling through Facebook, there's all this stuff in your feed where it's like, so-and-so likes why. Um, depending on the kind of content there, marketers or like content, develop, like content creators have actually paid Facebook for that kind of promotion. It's called like jacking and it's this, this marketing thing. But social searching is actually really similar. So the idea is that like rather than relying on the sort of overall structure of the web, um, which is like a spider or a crawler, although that is, is social in a way too, um, or relying on these predetermined categories that are created by sort of um, like catalogers or people who are working in the organization of information, and they're usually working in this like controlled vocabulary. We're thinking in a social search about constructing relevance in terms of different kinds of social networks. So let's go thinking about this question about like jeans. Where should I buy jeans? You know, I have to think about this question. And when I want to think about where I'm going to buy jeans, I have a person that I ask. I want to ask my friend Kate because my friend Kate has a really similar set of like, I mean, maybe not exactly similar. Mostly I think it's just that like, I like Kate style and I would like to have that style, right? I want to know where Kate is buying her jeans. And so I'm going to ask her and her recommendations about where she's going to like, where she buys jeans and what she likes about them are going to mean a lot more to me than just like some like Amazon or Google search where I'm like jeans, right? Um, because I know Kate, I know, you know, I know, I know her kind of style and Kate's going to be able to talk to me about how like the different jeans kind of fit and stuff in a way that like I trust her and we have this relationship. So her personal recommendations to me are going to matter a lot. And this is sort of an example of using your social relationships to find different kinds of information, right? I, there's a lot of places that you could go out and buy jeans and there's a lot of advice that you could have about going out and buying jeans. But what do I care about? I want to know what Kate says. Like Kate is my jeans guru. Um, and you know, we all have these kinds of people in our lives, right? It's not like Kate is some like jean buying expert who works for like some kind of blog thing or what have you. It's just that she's a good friend of mine. She knows me, I know her and I can get that from her. And so it's really helpful for me, right? And like, 
you know, you can use different kinds of social searching to sort of think about like what people like that or what people that you have pre-existing relationships with and trust for different kinds of things want to say or have to say about a specific topic. So you could also think about something like, well, who should I believe about minimum wage laws? Um, and there, one of the things that you might do is think about these like overall structures of connections between different kind of people and see who subscribes to whose different kinds of information and see if you can have a sense of like who the most highly respected people are in a particular field, um, not because like you know a lot about minimum wage, but just because you sort of have like there are all these credentialed people, but they all think that so-and-so knows a lot about this, right? So you can use the structure of social networks to sort of tr like kind of track onto that, right? And then of course the, the last thing that you might think about um, or last kind of ways that you can use different kinds of social networking to get an answer to questions is sort of what I think of as a sort of like eavesdropping in certain in like different kinds of contexts, right? What do people think about the latest episode of Game of Thrones? Well, if you go to Twitter, you're going to see that people are constantly talking about it. And you can see the different hashtags that are associated with Game of Thrones. You can see what sort of like content comes up under those hashtags, right? You can think about it in a really robust way. And in some sense, you can sort of get the sort of shape of a particular kind of train of thought that is obviously going to be constrained to different kind like different social groups but actually that can be that can be a benefit as opposed to a liability so what's good about this is that it enables a lot of personalization and in some sense you know the example that that is particularly popular and sort of seminal is that people who are interested in movies are not interested in the same type of thing as people who are interested in cinema right you have very different interests here and you're just interested in a different set of stuff and have different kinds of criteria and so if all of these things are put together in the same search results there's actually a loss of precision at the same time if everything is put together um it makes it more likely that you're going to have a more comprehensive search. And one of the problems about social searching is that it's much more likely, like you have to do a lot more work to discover information that's particularly comprehensive because social searching is really focused on um, these kinds of personal filters of the kinds of information that you're interested in, at least if you're thinking about it in terms of your own social network. There are going to be there are some interesting tools that are designed to sort of tease out different kinds of more general information and think about searching or finding specific information using that that aren't so personalized and we're going to talk about that in a minute but in some sense the reason that social searching has become so popular is because it enables this kind of personalized filtering. 